It's hard to believe that there are so few pristine waters left in Ireland. Only 21 sites, down from 500 some 30 years ago. I want to find out why we've been losing them so rapidly. In Carlo, the River Barrow flows through farms, villages and towns, all of which have impacted the water quality here. When a river is subject to some pressure, you tend to lose the most sensitive insects. And by examining the community of insects that we get from a sample, it gives us a very good snapshot of the quality of the river and what health it's in. This, this one has quite a lot of issues. You know, the cattle have been uh, in trampling this site as well. So we can see there's quite a lot of erosion going on here. Uh, when the sediment and the mud that the cattle have trampled on, when that makes its way into the river, it brings a lot of problems for the river. It, it leads to nutrient pollution and also pollution from the mud itself, because that smothers the habitat and reduces the quality of the river as well. So that it's easy to gather samples, Gary deliberately disturbs the gravel to stir up the life forms that live on the riverbed. put the insects in. So you can see quite, quite quickly, there's quite a lot of filamentous algae here in this sample, and that's a clear indicator of excessive nutrients in the river. That's a sign of, of pollution, really, is it? Yeah, it's, it's one of the most visible signs of pollution. Uh, it means that the river is under pressure from excessive nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus. So it's fertilizers basically or slurry kind of things that run yeah, off the land yeah. into the river. It's one of the, the clearest indicators. Sometimes you get a very excessive growth of it in the river and that okay. has the effect of smothering off a lot of the habitat. And all these little guys wriggling, there's loads of little wrigglers here. What are they? This river it seems to be quite impacted by pollution and one of the indicators of this are these small little chronomids. They survive in polluted rivers. So we can see straight away that there are lots of them wriggling around. And you can see they wriggle in a kind of figure of eight type oh, yeah, movement. Oh wriggle, wriggle. yeah, So they're a sign of pollution, they exist yeah, in polluted yeah. rivers. They're quite tolerant of low oxygen. So if they're there in very high numbers, then that's a, a clear bad sign. Over there, for example, there's a, a discharge from a local wastewater treatment plant. Oh, that one there? Just it? over there, yeah, you can just see it and, you know, that'll have an impact on the site as well. Wastewater is often not cleaned adequately before being discharged into rivers and there are hundreds of treatment plants all over the country. We did some research recently and looked at the, the pressures looking at, at uh, rivers in Ireland and we found that agriculture is actually the most widespread impact because it covers such a, a large area of the landscape in Ireland. So that's one of the more pervasive pressures. So in, it's, a, it's a cumulative impact? Essentially It's accumulation that, yeah. of all the different, mm. whether it's wastewater treatment or agriculture yeah, or forestry, yeah. they're all yeah. contributing a bit to the problem. Like the, the Q5, very high pristine sites that you might find in Kerry, for example, uh, a lot of those have a, a different bag of pressures that are operating on them. Forestry is the most pervasive pressure in a lot of the high status sites. Back on the Ivra Peninsula in Kerry, there's a lot of forestry. The management of conifer forests generally involves drainage, fertilizers, and clear felling, all of which can give rise to excess nutrients and silt entering waterways and causing pollution. Quilche, which owns and manages a lot of the forestry in this area, is working with the Kerry Life Project to trial some new approaches. I suppose with previous practices, um, a lot of the Cisco spruce plantations would have been planted right up to the river edges. So what, what would be the, the problems typically with f managing a forestry, whether it's planting it or, or felling it, and water quality? When you're felling the trees, just the release of nutrients, from the, the, the needles into the site, okay? Um, <clears throat> when a lot of these areas would have been planted back in the, the 60s, um, they probably would have received one treatment of fertilizer, so, and predominantly would have got um, phosphate, granulated rock mm, phosphate and fertilizer. And very, a small amount of phosphate <clears throat> in the river can do a lot of damage. Small amount of phosphate in the river can do damage, it can. 
But <clears throat> I suppose, you know, that phosphate is contained within the trees, so when the trees are felled, there, there can be that potential release. So in a site like this, where it would have been planted up kind of 30, 40 years ago, I'm, I'm taking it that there's, there's going to be challenges for water quality when you're, when you're cutting down these trees. There is very much. One of the trial solutions is underway. So just be mindful going in, so just a little slippy after the heavy rain. And what's going on in here? OK, so the, the operation that we're looking at here is um, what's called a halo tinning. OK. okay. The, the idea with the halo tinning is that when you look around, we, we'll see there's individual birches or maybe small groups of birch trees okay. trying to grow up. But the spruce has kind of covered in over the birch, you know, and it, it obviously needs light to grow. So what has happened here then is, is that the birch is, is, is dying off. So the spruce trees that we're going to ring back in, we'll cut about four or five centimetres in diameter around the tree. So we know that when you cut right through the bark of a tree all the way around, it'll die? The tree will die, yes. It's going to favour the birch tree now. So the birch tree is, is going to, because the tree is going to start to die off around it, it's going to create the light and that's going to allow the birch tree to start to, to And to why grow do you want more up. birch? We want more birch here because we want to, I suppose, in time here, um, to create more of a native woodland. OK, so you're effectively, you're, you're killing some of the Sitka spruce here Around to give it, a yes, chance for the yes. birch to come back. So why don't you just cut down the Sitka spruce? Why ring bark it? It's to uh, minimise the interventions on the site, OK? So we're actually bringing no machines onto the site here, so there's going to be no ground disturbance. It's all, it's a manual intervention, so it has all been done by hand because we're right up here, up to the river, up to the river bed where the, the, the population of the freshwater pearl mussel is here, it's, it's, it's highly sensitive. Pine needles can cause pollution and acidification in the waterways. Bernard explained that when they use this approach, the needles fall off more gradually, instead of all in one go, as would normally happen in a clear fell. Log dams in the drainage trenches also help to stem the flow of water from the plantation, and silt traps help to filter silt from the water. So bit by bit. A bit by bit. It's, it's going to take time. It's going to transform to back into a native woodland. Yes, indeed. Very good. It's great to see the work that Kerry Life and Quilcha are trialling here. Native woodlands and trees, like birch, can be beneficial for water quality. But sadly, this kind of management isn't the norm. And all over the country, clear felling and drainage from plantations can still be damaging to water quality. Just followed the stream out of the forest to the river here and just spotted two dead freshwater pearl mussels, the shells. 